we'll try again. Ladies and gentlemen, I now have the distinct pleasure to introduce this special session on the prospects of reunifying Cyprus. Divided for generations, last year brought fresh hope, principally driven by the trust, will and leadership shown by the two gentlemen you are now about to meet. His Excellency, Mr. Nikos Anastasiades, His Excellency, Mr. Mustafa Akinci. In my capacity as the Special Advisor to the UN Secretary General on Cyprus, I am closely <coughs> following the two leaders on their journey. It is a historic first to have them both on stage together. Later today, they will jointly meet the United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon. In this panel, as is in the case in the UN-facilitated talks, they have agreed to act in their capacities of leaders of the two communities, the Greek Cypriot community and the Turkish Cypriot community in Cyprus. The panel will be, joined, will be chaired by our founder and executive chairman, Professor Klaus Schwab. Over to you, Professor Schwab. Thank you very much, Espen Eide, who is a member of our managing board, but even more important in this context, the special delegate of the United Nations for Cyprus. <coughs> Your Excellencies, this is a session I was looking forward with particular interest. So much is at stake. We are living in a world that in many ways is falling apart. We have geopolitical and humanitarian tragedies of colossal proportions in the Middle East, right on Europe's doorstep. And as we heard in the last panel, many questions are being asked about the future of Europe. But then, in the middle of all of that, just where the Middle East meets Europe, a ray of hope has inspired us all. Cyprus is one of the few international disputes that seem to move in the right direction, thanks to the will, trust, and leadership of the two gentlemen who are sitting here on this stage. The two of you have shown great courage and dedication over the last eight months of intensive negotiations. My colleague Espen Eine keeps me regularly informed, and I'm indeed very much aware of the still important challenges which remain. But rather than focusing on concrete issues in the talks right now, we are all very keen to hear from each of you about your vision, about your general vision. What could a united Cyprus look like? What could a united Cyprus bring to the region, to Europe, and to the world? And what would overcoming generations of divisions mean in practice? Several studies have shown that the economy of a united Cyprus, at peace with itself and with its neighbors, would have a growth trajectory significantly higher than the two economies of a divided Cyprus. This, in turn, means jobs, prosperity, and well-being. In this room, you have many of the world's important business leaders which are looking with great interest at what you are doing. I'm particularly pleased to share over this session because, as many of you know, in 1988, at the annual meeting, Prime Minister Turgut Özal of Turkey and Andreas Papandreou, Prime Minister of Greece, signed the Davos Declaration, which opens the door for a rapprochement between those two countries who had been at the brink of a war 
and which ultimately led to the establishment of lasting peaceful relations, a necessary framework for your own current efforts. Today, I believe that you both represent the best source of hope with respect for drawing the line back to the events in 1988. The long-standing engagement of the Forum in the region is here and will prevail, and it will prevail particularly within a united Cyprus. Please applaud and welcome very cordially the two leaders of Cyprus. And I may invite Mr. Nikos Anastia Siades to take first the floor. Excellencies, distinguished guests, it is both an honor and a pleasure to be addressing you today. And uh, I would like to sincerely thank uh, Klaus uh, Zwab, Executive uh, Chairman of the World Economic Forum, as well as Espen Barth Eide, for organizing this event. It is not, I do believe, a coincidence that this session follows a discussion on the future of Europe since the history of Europe and of the European Union teaches us many valuable lessons. The most important being that uh, a united Europe is the only sustainable antidote to conflict and division. And at a time when Europe is enduring a deep crisis primarily linked to the tragic events unfolding in Cyprus' immediate neighborhood, myself and Mustafa are working tirelessly to reunite, to reunify our country. Since May 2015, we are engaging in intensive negotiations to reach a settlement, a settlement that will be in line with the vision of the vast majority of Cypriots to transform, that is, to transform our country from an island divided to an island that it is a common homeland for coexistence, peaceful cooperation and tolerance, in full conformity and respect to the set of rules, values and principles of the European Union. The negotiations which cover all chapters of the Cyprus problem, have resulted so far in convergences and common understanding on many issues, whilst differences remain on several other substantial and core issues. And without intending to create unrealistic expectations, I believe that 2016 could be the year that we learned the unacceptable status quo, provided always that we continue working with determination, we table constructive proposals on outstanding issues that will correspond to the climate of hope prevailing in the island and will take into account the sensitivities and concerns of both communities. A third a factor or element is that uh, all other stakeholders and interested parties involved support constructively the efforts. And the fourth is that we do hope that we shall have the support of the international community at large, particularly as regards um, sustain up, sust substantially contributing to meet the financial aspects of the solution. Ladies and gentlemen, I am adamant that Europe and the European project holds many of the answers to the puzzle that is the solution of the Cyprus problem. That is the solution of the Cyprus problem. Let us not forget that Cyprus is and will continue to be a member state of the European Union. We must therefore approach all issues on the negotiating table through the prism of the EU. It is for this reason that we consider it a success for the process 
and for both sides equally, as well as the EU itself, that uh, in this new round of the negotiations, the EU has assumed an enhanced role always under the auspices of the United Nations. Reunited Cyprus needs to be able to effectively participate and constructively facilitate the EU decision-making rather than hinder it. it. Further, a lasting solution to the Cyprus problem would also have significant ramifications for Europe and all interested parties. At the same time, the discovery of hydrocarbons in the region open up new possibilities for cooperation and synergies. We strongly believe that energy, energy cooperation in the region, without exclusions, can transform the Eastern Mediterranean into a pillar of stability, security and peace, while at the same time it can be a decisive factor to achieving energy security for the European Union. As I have often stated, I am convinced that emergency, that, sorry, energy must not be allowed to be a source of friction, but rather a catalyst for peace, stability, and regional integration. Essentially, it can become a coal and steel story for the region. Ladies and gentlemen, these are decisive times for Cyprus, for the wider region, for the EU and the international community. I can assure you that living in the midst of a region of turmoil, we are committed to continue working with resolve to heal what is an open wound at the heart of Europe. So, as for Cyprus to be established, as a reference point and simple for coexistence of the whole region. I count on the full support of the international community on reaching this goal and on turning the page of history. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Anastiades. May I now call on Mr. Akinci. Excellencies, honorable guests, it is an honor to be here with you at a time when negotiations have entered a crucial phase. And first of all, I wish to thank Mr. Schwab and Mr. Aide for making this possible. Within the limited time, I would like to convey three messages. Firstly, I wish to reiterate the strong determination of Turkish Cypriots to reach a settlement based on bizonal federation with political equality, as well as European values and principles we all share. As you may all recall, 12 years ago, the strong Turkish Cypriot yes vote was not enough for a settlement since the UN plan did not get the approval of the majority of Greek Cypriots. Consequently, Cyprus entered the EU as a divided island and Turkish Cypriots were unfortunately left out. This time, as the two leaders which belong to the same generation we are working tirelessly to achieve a mutually acceptable solution, and we are aware that this is the last trial for uniting our island. Secondly, I strongly believe that settlement shall not only benefit the two communities, but it will also improve the relations between all relevant actors, including EU, Turkey, Greece, and the future United Cyprus. With this solution, the newly found hydrocarbon resources in the Eastern Mediterranean will act as a source of peace, stability, and cooperation rather than conflict and tension. 
United Cyprus will be able to serve as a hub for pipelines transferring natural gas to the European Union through Cyprus and Turkey, which seems to be the most feasible route. Fresh water from Turkey, already brought to North Cyprus, can be shared by all inhabitants of the island and interconnectivity of electricity networks between the EU and the Middle East will become a reality via Cyprus and Turkey, which again seems to be the most efficient way. All this can only be possible if Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots see each other as future partners and concentrate on the goal to create a united Cyprus where peace and prosperity shall prevail and the future generations will not have to face the same strife and uncertainties of the past. Thirdly, we are aware that we, the Cypriots, are the main actors that will turn this into a reality so that it also serves as a beacon of hope to other ongoing conflicts. Hence, we will continue our hard work to put an end to the 53-year-old problem and pave way for new economic opportunities that will bring prosperity and security to our turbulent region. To that end, a strong collective international support shall be needed in terms of technical and financial assistance. In concluding, besides working for the solution of the Cyprus problem, I wish to express the urgent need to work together to create a better world and to make 2016 the year marked by not only a Cyprus agreement, but by better cooperation and effective action against any kind of human sufferings on our planet. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kinshipi. Before uh, we listen to the Prime Minister of Turkey, I just ask you both for a symbolic gesture and a photo opportunity to stand with me here on the stage. And please. Encourage the two leaders with all this big applause to make progress and to come soon to a conclusion. of the two communities, the Greek Cypriot community and the Turkish Cypriot community in Cyprus. The panel will be, joined, will be chaired by our founder and executive chairman, Professor Klaus Schwab. Over to you, Professor Schwab. Thank you very much, Espen Eide, who is a member of our managing board but even more important in this context, the Special Delegate of the United Nations for Cyprus. <coughs> Your Excellencies, this is a session I was looking forward with particular interest. So much is at stake. We are living in a world that in many ways is falling apart. We have geopolitical and humanitarian tragedies of colossal proportions in the Middle East, right on Europe's doorstep. And as we heard in the last panel, many questions are being asked about the future. We'll try again. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I now have the distinct pleasure to introduce this special session on the prospects of reunifying Cyprus. Divided for generations, last year brought fresh hope, principally driven by the trust, will and leadership shown by the two gentlemen you are now about to meet. Of Europe. But son, in the middle of all of that, just where the Middle East meets Europe, a ray of hope has inspired us all. Cyprus is one of the few international disputes that seem to move in the right direction, thanks to the will, trust, and leadership of the two gentlemen who are sitting here on this stage. The two of you have shown it. His Excellency, Mr. Nikos Anastasiades, His Excellency, Mr. Mustafa Akinci. In my capacity as the Special Advisor to the UN Secretary General on Cyprus, I am closely <coughs> following the two leaders on their journey. It is a historic first to have them both on stage together. Later today, they will jointly mean, meet the United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon. In this panel, as is in the case in the UN-facilitated talks, they have agreed to act in their capacities of leaders